of Calgary. We are so thrilled to have you join us tonight as we worship together. And tonight we are going to be singing about how, how we fight our battles. And I'm not sure what you are walking through currently or what you're facing. Um, but, you know, there's some powerful, powerful testimonies in the Old Testament about how God's people told them to use worship as part of their warfare. That's how they won their battles, was, was worshiping, and their enemies fell. And so I just encourage you to, to really press in as we sing together tonight. And, uh, and let's declare right now who has already won our battles, and then practice our warfare together tonight as we worship.
looks like the walls are closing in, but well, there's no way out, Lord. I pray that all we may see is your embrace, Lord. We may see a glimpse of our vision, Lord. The vision there for us. Thank you so much, Lord. All the battles, all the defeats we feel like we've had. It may look like we're defeated, Lord. But we're standing on top, Father. We're victorious, not because of our own will, not because of our own fight, Father. But because of your grace and your grace alone. So we thank you. We acknowledge you, Lord. We bless you. And we ask you to continue to serve us. And we continue to just be connected to you, Father. Thank you, Lord, in your mighty name I pray. Well, good evening, Calvary family. Thanks again for joining us today. I'm so glad you're here with us. Uh, I always look forward to the opportunity to talk and share a little bit. Um, and I want to encourage you. I know um, each Sunday we have our live in-person services. We have them online as too. Uh, but I want to encourage you. Uh, would you join us, not just Tuesdays and Thursdays, because I, I think the devotions have been wonderful, but uh, our, our Wednesday night Bible study with Pastor Yvonne has been going very well. Uh, and if you haven't joined us for an in-person service yet, uh, I, I'll, I'll encourage you, come out on a Wednesday night. There's, uh, It's a much smaller crowd. We've been having 15 to 20 people. Uh, and so in our sanctuary, 15 to 20 people is uh, really uh, some good space for distancing. Uh, you can have an entire section of the sanctuary to yourself. But what it'll do is give you an idea of what uh, the sanctuary is laid out like and how it uh, it feels so you can really kind of understand because uh, I love that we can do the online stuff and I love that we can worship together like that but the reality is that there's just nothing like being in person uh, and really those are the things that we need, we need to keep in mind because um, as time goes on what we have a tendency to do is to forget we forget things and really uh, tonight's devotion is is uh, is very similar, uh, not very similar. It's 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 really it's a re reminder of something. Uh, and so here's the joy in in preaching the Bible. Um, I don't have to come up with new ideas. <laughs> I don't I don't have to get super creative and find this amazing um, poignant thing to say. I'm not I'm not. I, I when when you preach the Bible. Um, it's really amazing how powerful that is because it's the word of God. And so when God says it, it carries a whole lot of weight. Um, but sometimes we all need a reminding of things, especially as things go on and on and on. I was, I was texting with a friend last week just to see how they were doing. And uh, basically everybody's response right now on how they're doing is everybody's okay. Uh, nobody's doing great. <laughs> Nobody ever says they're doing great. I'm sure there's people doing great. Uh, but the response is, I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine. Uh, and finally, eventually, you get down to the conversation on the texting, especially if it's somebody you haven't talked to for a little while. Uh, I'm all done with the lockdown. I'm all done with the coronavirus. I'm all done with this. And everyone says, yes, it's been too long. And it has been too long. It has been. It feels exhausting. Uh, and it's... it's uh, it's, it's trying. It's difficult. It wears on the best of us, right? And uh, so I, I wanted to just give us some encouragement or even probably a better phrasing is a reminder. Um, because everyone is, most folks are, we're, we're walking through this season and we all thought, everyone thought, I think even, I think even the professionals, the, the big wigs thought that we're in August now. And so when we went into the, 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 the shutdown order in March, I think everyone thought it would be done by the summer. Um, and now we're into the last month of summer and uh, we <laughs> don't really see a change coming. Um, and so it gets tiring. It gets exhausting. Uh, and I think what happens is if, if we don't start to see some relief, I think we're going to have to start revisiting some of the conversations that we were having in March and April where we were talking about how to overcome anxiety, fear, and depression because I think we're, we're heading back into those seasons. There was some hope as summer came and things started opening up. Um, and I think I can see, and this is, this is just my opinion. This is not any 
but I can see how that could shift um, back, especially as some states are reporting increased numbers and such. And so I wanted to give us a reminder tonight of something that we talked about early on in, in the COVID uh, situ situation, but also um, that it's been around for centuries because the Bible was written a long time ago. Um, but here, here's what I want uh, us to talk about tonight. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition for sinners, from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted the point of shedding your blood. And it continues on. I love, I love, I really love, um, Hebrews chapter 12 is very powerful. But there's a couple key things I want us to, to hi highlight there. Now, when, when the author of Hebrews, which we don't know who the author of Hebrews is, wrote this, when he says, endure with perseverance, run with perseverance, the race marked out for you, um, that's where we're at, right? We're racing with perseverance, but he gives us how we do it. And this is, what I, this is the encouragement I have for us tonight because uh, it, it's, it's so easy to, to lose sight of the goal and the target. Um, you know, so there, there's been a number of studies that have been done, and uh, even one came out last week that said um, biblical engagement has dropped by 10% in this season. So uh, before the COVID-19 circumstances and situations, biblical engagement of active churchgoers was at 29%. So that's a whole other conversation, right? Like, because it should be at a hundred percent. But now, those that can, those that were previously surveyed, surveyed again. Um, now it's down to nineteen percent, and uh, people have just gotten tired, and they've they've gotten out of the routine. Um, I've, I've shared this one before, but there was another study done last week. It, the report came out last week that um, it's like forty percent of those that were regular attenders of church meaning that they went at least once a month, have not engaged with anything from church for over two months. It's that convenience Christianity that has become very hard, right? Uh, and there's, there's a myriad of sources online and people are concerned about coming out. Uh, I'm, I'm talking to the crowd that probably doesn't really need to be talked to because um, you're here on a devotion. But this gives you something to pray about. And it gives you something to focus on too in encouraging other believers. Um, you, you, probably, you probably miss that person that you have gone, Calvary cracks me up. And, and, and it's not, Calvary's not unique in this, but um, I, I've talked to people at church and they're like, well, I don't know who that person is. And I'm like, you've gone to church together for 20 years. How do you not know their name? Uh, and it was just, well, they sit over there. I sit over here. And, but you probably miss that person that sits in your section who you don't know their name, but you always have some friendly banter with on a Sunday. You probably miss that person. And, you know, when we think of those people, I want to encourage you to pray for them because everyone is kind of feeling this pressure. And so here's, here's what, what the author of Hebrews says on how, do we, how we persevere and run our race. Now, obviously, they're talking about the race of Christianity, but and I'm, I'm kind of connecting this to the race of the shutdown, lockdown, whatever we want to call it, but it's still, they go hand in hand because what we're seeing is people are walking away or drifting away from the relationship with Jesus during the shutdown. And so this persevere in your race is so very important. And you that are watching right now, you're like, I don't need to be reminded because I'm here, which is great. I love it. But you can pray for those that haven't remained as faithful. Pray for them. Encourage them that the Holy Spirit would come and speak to them. Because here's what we have to do. Fixing our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. This is how we walk through challenging times, is that we never let our eyes waver from Jesus. We keep our eyes fixed on him for the entirety of the race. 
And we never lose sight of what he's doing. We never lose sight of who he is. We never lose sight of the fact that he has gone ahead of us. Probably like my favorite, my favorite, the way I envision this verse when I, when I, when I talk, about, talk about it. You might not know this about me. Um, I talk about myself a lot because um, I like to tell stories and I've got lots of stories to tell. Um, one of my favorite movie series is Rocky. Uh, Rocky is, in my opinion, an American institution. Uh, if you have not watched Rocky, I think you should watch Rocky. Um, I think great, right? Not all of them. I mean, I think Rocky number five kind of got weird, um, but uh, I think I think Rocky Rocky five is kind of weak. But Rocky four is like the, the favorite movie of everybody, right? Because it's like America, America, right? We beat Russia, uh, and so that was you know right at the tail end of the Cold War, all that stuff. Anyways, uh, and so. Um, in Rocky, Rocky IV, where he fights Dolph Lundgren, um, Ivan Draco, who is the giant Russian um, opponent, uh, you see Rocky goes to Russia to, ch to train uh, for this fight, which everyone knows. The training montage is always like, the, yeah, I feel great. I can do that too. But at one point, you see Rocky ch run, running up a, mo a mountain and he's in the snow, right? Uh, uh, uh. And if you watch... If you watch the montage, you have to watch it. You have to watch it real close because uh, they do it from like a helicopter shot where they're, they're circling around. Um, there's footprints already in the snow. And so literally uh, Rocky Balboa, uh, we know Sylvester Stallone, is he, they're trying to show he's training, trying to show he's training. But either somebody went ahead of him to get the footprints in this deep snow so it would be easier for him, or this was a retake or whatever. But this is the image that I have of Jesus. Not that Jesus is rocky, but that Jesus has gone ahead of us in difficult circumstances and situations and put the footprints for us to follow. And if you've ever gone through really deep, thick snow, you understand how beneficial it is to have somebody go in front of you that you can walk in their footprints. And, 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 and in difficult times when we're, we are uh, wore out and exhausted, keep in mind that Jesus has gone ahead of us. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. Um, but even more than that, uh, if we keep our eyes fixed on him, if we keep our eyes fixated on Jesus... All of those things that are distracting us and discouraging us and bogging us down will fall away. Hebrews chapter 12 is so very encouraging uh, because it tells us of great faith. And it tells us how we can live in courage. And I would, I would encourage you, if you honestly, uh, if you need encouragement, start in, oh, I think you start in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19, and read to the end. And that will be a great encouragement to you as you learn of all these people that by faith have gone ahead and have found uh, their glory in God and what Jesus has done. Um, let me just close with this verse in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39 and 40. These were all commended for their faith, because chapter 11 is the heroes of the faith, right? These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us, they would be made perfect. We can persevere in our faith because God is faithful. Keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because he has gone ahead and put footprints for us to follow. Let me pray for you. Right now, Jesus, I pray that uh, in the homes of those that are watching right now, whether they're watching it live or they're watching it on replay, I pray that they would be encouraged by your Holy Spirit, that you would help to lift their faith, give them a supernatural faith engagement that shows them that you have gone ahead. Let us keep our eyes fixed on you at all times, the author and perfecter of our faith. We will persevere and endure all trials and tribulations because we know you have made it possible. And so Jesus, I pray you encourage each and every one of us right now. Be with us as we walk forward following you. 
bless each one tonight in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, we will see you tomorrow night, either online or in person at seven o'clock uh, for our Bible study with Pastor Yvonne. God bless. Have a great night.